Um, just appreciate the opportunity to provide you with updates in regards to our facilities and things that are happening. Um, you can see many of those things that are happening from the street, but tonight you'll be able to hear not only from me, but from both of the construction companies that are working on the building. I do want you just to be aware that um, our construction companies attend our uh, regularly scheduled Board of Education meetings. And during those meetings, they provide updates on a regular basis. What's happening on the sites, um, if there is additional challenges to come to um, their attention and they share with us. And then from the, that's what they share with the board. So you're always welcome to, to um, attend those meetings. They happen first thing in the board agenda. And then uh, we obviously, we have people that, uh, that uh, work with the construction companies on a regular basis. They have meetings um, uh, almost weekly and provide um, updates on everything that's happening on our sites. So as you can see, we call this the, um, uh, we're gonna wanna share this evening um, progress on where we are. So if you go back, <laughs> this is the agenda. We're gonna talk just briefly. I'm gonna share some information regarding the timeline of our uh, projects, which we've shared in the past, but we just wanna make sure that we're reflecting on how we got here. And then um, we'll have Panzeek and C.T. Taylor, and then we'll be able to answer questions if you have had any uh, in regards to what's happening. So with our timeline, also when you came in, I think we had the videos going right, of both those buildings. Those are also on our website if you have an interest in looking at those. Um, um, those have been available for uh, several months now. So we want to always make sure that we take the time to thank our community for passing the bond issue in 2016. It was a, it was a um, first time in the history of the school district that all three of our communities supported the initiative of building brand new schools for our community. And then immediately following, we began the process of design of our new buildings. Actually, what was happening at the same time, which um, is, is complex, is you don't, when you pass a bond issue, you don't automatically get all the money wired into your bank account. There's a process that you have to go through to make sure that the bonds are being sold and um, our rating is where it needs to be. So we went through that process at the same time that we were beginning the design of the new schools. And our design process was pretty comprehensive. We involved a lot of people in that conversation. Practitioners, people who are gonna be in this building when it opens, and what their needs are, some of the things that they have now that they wanted to continue to have in the new building, and then also those things that they know are available out there with today's technology and design that will help them create great learning environments for our students. We began the renovation process pretty soon into our, um, uh, this entire um, process. And those renovation projects are complete. We did Big Creek Elementary School, and at Big Creek, we put in a brand new HVAC system, we had new windows, we had some new doors, we also put in a new entranceway for that building that really was dealing with making sure that when visitors came into the school that they didn't have direct access. We had the buzz-in system in the old structure. You could buzz in, you, but once you buzzed in, you were walking directly into the rest of the school. If you go over there now and you come into the vestibule, you buzz in and then it automatically directs you to go into the main office. So they go in, they meet the receptionist, and actually not too far down from the receptionist, we have a new office location for the building. It has a uh, full-time SRO. That's a uh, resource officer that is there. Then, you know, we have people then know where they're going, why they're going to those areas in the building. So that was a big piece of the renovations that happened over at Big Creek. And we did some parking lot work as well in, in the parking lot that is designed primarily for guests. Um, if you pull in that driveway, it's to the left. Over at the middle school, we spent almost the entire year, just like at Big Creek, doing all kinds of updates. 
We um, put in a brand new HVAC system, fire suppression system or a fire uh, system within both Big Creek and also over at the middle school. The middle school, we also have a connector between the, what we would call the, the mid park, if you know that site, the main building. And then that's now connected to Middlebrook, the old Middlebrook, which is the, the section of the building that houses all of our fifth grade students. HVAC, windows, doors, additional parking, um, a separate area for bus pickup and drop off. That was a very big need so that we didn't have cars and buses interacting with each other. Um, and it helps the flow of traffic coming in off of Paula. We also have the ability, if we need to, to have cars go directly from Paula over to Middlebrook because there's now a, a way to get all the way through in the back. That area, um, uh, also we added some additional parking for staff in the fifth grade area, a small uh, asphalt area for uh, outside activities. Also connected with the connection, there are four classrooms. So if you haven't been over there, when I say buildings get connected, some people think it's just a hallway, and that's not the case. It is four state-of-the-art classrooms for our fifth graders. Um, and I would invite you to come over and see what that looks like. It's a lot of windows, a lot, a lot, the students have the ability to see a lot of the nature because it actually goes through the wooded area between the new buildings. Outside, there's also an outdoor learning space that is being utilized quite a bit actually for our fifth grade kids. In the old uh, Middlebrook building, which is now fifth grade, all those rooms were renovated, painted, uh, again, new, new windows, new system, new ceiling in certain sections. There was a section in the back that was taken out, which was an old teacher's lounge area that was removed. That is now an area where two or three classrooms can go out and sit if they're doing some type of presentation to a larger group. We also took advantage of the old multi-purpose room and created a pretty, um, pretty cool lunch room learning space in that area with a completely brand new kitchen uh, and serving area for our fifth grade students. That is worth going to see. It is no longer the um, institutional type tables where you'd have maybe 10 kids sitting at the same table, stepping over the bench if you remember, and then you'd fold the benches up at the end of lunch so people could get clean underneath there. Um, now it is all like really cool furniture. There can be kids that sit on higher tables, some on lower, they sit in groups of four. We have com comfortable furniture as well. That room was also designed for multi-use. So that if a big group, if you wanted to have all the kids that come down and have a lesson or a presentation, you could do that in that space. And they have all the um, uh, new technology in that space that, they, that our uh, staff can utilize. Those were pretty big projects and we're, we're glad that those are done. They were complex because they were renovation projects. A lot of times, you know, when you start to get into taking things down and, and having to make, you know, um, uh, deal with new HVAC systems, you, there are challenges that go along with renovations and we can all understand that. So we're really excited about that. We also changed the structure of the building. It used to be a junior high model. So I, I try to describe that as it was a high school schedule for, for younger students. Seven period day, 50 minute period classes, and then they would go from class to class to class to class. A lot of traffic in the hallway, and that was not ideal for um, those students in the learning. So the district spent a lot of time um, researching what was the best model for students in grades five through eight. And through about a year and a half, almost two year study, it was determined that the traditional middle school model, which means team structures, was the best for our students. So in the middle, in this brand new renovated or this renovated building, it is now a middle school structure. 
there are three teachers on a team, there may be four teachers on a team, we actually have one two-person team in the fifth grade. So students are interacting with less adults and, the, and adults have the opportunity to work with kids more frequently. And then they have the flexibility with their schedule. Because we know, right, that there may be a science lesson that's going to take 80 minutes because you're doing a lesson and then you want the kids to actually do some hands-on lab experiences. And within a 50-minute schedule in the old model, it was really hard to get that done. So our teachers have the flexibility. So that's a big piece of the, the uh, renovations over at the middle school, and we're really excited about that. So that all was completed in uh, 17, beginning of 18, we opened it up, and um, we have begun the work for the new elementary school and the high school. A lot of site work was completed in preparation for both of those. We ended up having to take down Ford. So, you know, when, when people would say, wow, there's a lot of work going on at the high school, well, they, that's behind this building, and they could start on that much sooner, right, because it wasn't disrupting. Um, they didn't need to take down a section of the building. Well, the elementary schools caught up, right? I mean, you, you can see there's a lot going on on Holland Road, but they couldn't start until all the kids were gone. And then they gave us about, what, two weeks? Three weeks to get everything out of the building. And I can just tell you that was a, that was a challenge. Um, a lot of people moving a lot of boxes, getting them to the right place. Fortunately, we have just incredible staff, and our maintenance staff and custodial staff just did a great job. So you can see in 18, site work broke ground on the new schools, and then we also um, um, completed, uh, began and then completed our um, uh, swimming pool renovations. You may have seen that. Beth put it in the paper. We really appreciated that. She was there when we did the ribbon cutting. Um, the pool has been completely redone. There is, a, there is a brand new filtration system, all new paint, all new seats with backs for those that are going to watch the swim meets. The pool was all um, redone and um, we had to make some, we have new benches for the, the students and then we also have separate locker rooms there for our swimmers when they go over. Because right in the past, the locker rooms that, that are used for uh, basketball or, or volleyball, they were being shared. So we, they made some renovations in those locker rooms so they'd be separated out for our swimmers and then other athletes um, competing. So the goal, the goal is that we will be able to open up our buildings, um, the elementary school and the high school in August of 2020. Now, the elementary school will probably get the keys a little bit earlier. And we had a lot of discussions around transitioning students and when it was the right time to do that. You know, if we get the keys sometime, let's just say, beginning of uh, 2020, we also know from experience that once you get the keys, doesn't mean that you can just like, move in and everything's gonna operate the way it's supposed to. This is construction. When things are done, we wanna make sure that we're checking everything, we're making sure that the systems are working properly. So there was a decision made that we were not gonna transition students in the middle of the school year for our young, young students um, from Brook Park Memorial and Brookview. We're gonna take advantage of the spring. That allows us to, to um, really help transition those students to the way that they should transition into a new school. We'll be taking field trips with those students over so they can get to see the new building. We'll hold different events for the community in that school so people can see what's happening within that school and how it was designed. We'll have staff will be identified that will be going into that school and they'll be able to work together collaboratively well in advance of transitioning students in, uh, in August of 2020. At the high school, we, um, we know that the first section of the um, high school will be completed in August of 2020. That is directly behind this auditorium. If you go out, that's the buildings right now that you see closest to Eastland Road. Those are the academic wings. And then there's the center building. That part of the building we anticipate to be able to get into in 2020, August of 2020. We will still be able to use this building for some of the other activities like in this auditorium and the gymnasium until um, we have um, the next piece which is planned to be done sometime in late fall 
That's the auditorium, performing arts center, the um, main gymnasium, the auxiliary gyms, there's additional classroom space in those areas as well. So that is the schedule that we have going on right now. We're excited about it. And then the last piece, which is just important that people um, understand, that once we move everybody into the new high school, okay, nobody's gonna be able to really see the new high school from Bagley Road because it's behind this one. So then sometime in that winter, they'll begin going through this building and, and begin the process of taking this building down. Then in the spring and through that summer, they'll be able to increase the parking as part of the plan and the green space that will be quite a ways off of Bagley back to the entrance of the new school. And then in 2020, August of 2020, assuming that we have good weather and the grass comes up, it'll all be completed um, for our students. We are, we're, just, we're just really excited. Um, a lot of people would like us, you know, like this to, to uh, happen real quick so we can move in. I can just tell you we uh, uh, have been um, very fortunate to work with a great company that was involved in the design process, but we also are very fortunate to have two construction companies that really care about the project and spend a lot of time with us making sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, Panzeca um, is building our high school, C.T. Taylor is building the elementary school, and C.T. Taylor was involved in all the renovation work over at Big Creek and also at the middle school. Um, that relationship is important, as you know. And when they have questions, we get together, we talk about them, and then when we have questions that come to us, they're very responsive and get back to us. So we're very fortunate to have those relationships, and we think we really hit it out of the park when it came to selecting the construction companies for us to work with. Um, what I'd like to do is transition to kind of the facts, like what do you see, what's going on back here, and I'm gonna ask uh, Mark from Panzeca to come up, and he has a um, presentation that he'll go through, and then um, probably would be a good idea, if it's okay, I'll give you this mic, but oh, you want the, the little, oh, nice. Yeah. Um, if there are questions in regards to the high school, how about if we do that, right? So Mark will talk about the high school, and then if you have questions, we'll go into a little question and answer, and then I'll have C.T. Taylor come up, and they can talk about the elementary, and if then you have questions, we can go from there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mark Pianzica. I get to represent uh, Pianzica and what we're doing at the high school. So. Um, what you have in front of you is part of what we give on a monthly basis of an update at the board meeting. So this is our uh, April update for the high school. Um, so as you can see on the diagram uh, behind me, the two right buildings, called Buildings 1, uh, which re represents B and C, those are the two academic wings of the high school. The building in the center, Building 2, or Area A, is more of the administration area and some of the arts rooms and the, and the central utility parts of the building. And the parts on the far west side of the site, which are buildings three, four, and five, or we call D, which is the auditorium or performing arts center, uh, E, which is the uh, competition gymnasium, and then F and G, which is the auxiliary gym and the locker room area. So what you see out there right now is you see the structure of buildings B and C, as well as A going up, and then we also have masonry going on in buildings F and G and starting in E. So, so far, work that's been completed to date is the site work has been completed. We have um, gone through, put all the underground utilities in, have graded the site, put site fencing up, which I'm sure a lot of you see, and we try to do the best we can to maintain it on a regular basis, and we've been meeting with the uh, local neighbors that live around the area on a, a more frequent basis to understand their concerns and try to address that. Uh, we meet about every six weeks uh, to talk about those issues, so hopefully we're addressing those and trying to be proactive in that manner, and um, if anybody sees anything, please feel free to reach out to us so we can do try to make sure we address those concerns. But 
So site work is pretty well complete for what we can do at this point in time. Now we're focusing on building the buildings. Um, in areas B and C, which are the two classroom buildings, um, we've got the concrete slabs, which is called the slab on grade, has been placed. We have the physical structure of the building up, or we call it the, the skeleton or the shell. So the steel frame is up, the precast uh, planks, which is the floor slabs, and then topping slabs have been uh, concreted and placed on top of those. We have started the exterior envelope of the building, which are the metal studs and walls and the dens glass that goes on. We have to see the window openings are being framed up with blocking going in to accept the new windows. Uh, the roof framing is being installed, the bar joists and metal decking, which will then accept the roof, which would start in the next uh, few weeks. So the, the two um, academic wings are coming along very well and as scheduled. Um, things are going as planned. In area A, which is the administration part, is also the area, you know, those uh, main grand steps that are coming up on the south elevation. Those are poured and they're working on uh, erecting the structure of the building. So we've got the second and third floor erected. They're working on putting steel up for the roof as well as bar joists. So the frame of the building is starting to come together and really take its shape and form. Um, the exterior envelope will follow areas B and C, which are the two academic areas, and work our way into A. Uh, we're also working on the basic infrastructure, so bringing electrical services in, mechanical services into the building. Areas F and G, which is the auxiliary gym and the locker rooms, uh, that masonry is, is complete. They're called Berry Masonry. That's the, the concrete block that will accept the uh, trusses and bar joists that will uh, form the roof. That masonry is done, and they're working on starting to install those trusses. And the mason is now working in area E, I'm sorry, E, yes, which is the um, competition gym. We're working on their way from the north side of the site towards the south, which is ending up at area D, which is the auditorium. Auditorium, the foundations are complete. Uh, they're working on some miscellaneous masonry in there, but that's the next step for the, for the masonry contractor. The neighborhood, we're doing our best to control the mud, the traffic, um, and just a lot of stuff going on. We've got over 100 uh, field workers on site right now. We probably have 15 to 20 deliveries per day of semis coming in, concrete trucks and so on and so forth. So we're doing the best we can uh, to maintain and try and keep the neighborhood that you live in every day, the neighborhood that you want to be in, um, and try and get done as fast as we can and keep that uh, neighborhood environment as clean as possible. Upcoming activities, uh, we're going to focus on the balance of this, uh, the spring and summer on enclosing the building. So getting that exterior uh, framing for the walls complete. We'll have masonry starting towards the end of, of this month. Um, we'll have roofing going on and we're working our way from the east side of the site towards the west. So the goal and the intention is by the fall, we'll have the buildings under roof and we're getting, working on getting them enclosed. So as of right now, things are on schedule, we're on budget, and uh, it's going well. Here's some, here's some pictures. Uh, this is area B, uh, looking towards the south part of the site. This is the interior courtyard in between buildings B and C. This is area uh, C exterior, uh, facing southwest. Interior elevations, you can see um, ductwork hanging from the ceiling from the mechanical contractor. Walls are starting to be framed, the metal stud walls that are going to form the classrooms. We have stairs going in, going up to the various floors. This is uh, level two. You see they're starting to work on more of the mechanical system in the building. Level three, which is the top floor of building B and C. The metal decking is going on to accept the roof and they're working on uh, getting piping up there. This is uh, level three, which is the area C, which is the northern building. They're getting ready to pour the topping slab on top of the precast. Area A, steel structure. Area F, the uh, trusses are going in for the roof structure. More pictures of, this is looking north towards uh, building F and G, looking through the main competition gym. 
and this is the auditorium. You can see the foundation and the block has been installed and they're working their way towards that southern part of the site. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Ultimately, did we connect buildings one, two, and five at the ground floor level? Uh, not interior-wise. There's doors that go through um, the walk outside. They are connected via a bridge on the second floor. Okay. Yeah, our concern originally was you have four door, extra doors for scuff laws, but okay. Yeah, that's All right. good. Yep. These buildings look pretty substantial and well built, but how, I would, just out of curiosity, how serious a weather event uh, would, would they be? Yep, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the question in a sec. Yeah. Would they be built to withstand? Yeah, so the question was, the, build, the, the statement was the buildings look really strong, right, because there's a lot of concrete and, and a lot of block. The question was, what in, in regards to weather, like how strong are they in regards to tornado. some type of a weather, um, major weather event? So I'm going to say I'm not the designer, but they are designed to meet the building codes that are specified by the Ohio Facilities School Commission, which um, dictates what those, those parameters are. So, I mean, they, they do comply with the design codes for those, those buildings. What else? Yep. Where's the cafeteria? Oh, that's good. Good. Yeah. Question, where's the cafeteria? So in this high school, there is not one cafeteria. The design of the high school has multiple cafes. Um, and that was by design. There will be a lot of different places for our students to be able to go and get something to eat. You know, one of the things that we knew based on the whole design was cafeterias, it's a big space, a lot of square feet. And we took that square feet and we incorporated that into, a lot of that into the learning environments. The building itself is designed in sections, learning sections. And outside of each one of those classrooms is a larger learning section so that people can, kids can work on a science project or be a part of a math, you know, if they really enjoy being in the math area, there's a space within those learning areas for them to be. So in the center section, there is a larger cafe, and then there are cafes in the other academic wings, and then also over in the uh, performing arts and the um, main gymnasium area as well. I can also tell you, because that's a good, that makes, that's a good question, it leads into the structure of the day for a student. And there is a lot of work going on right now in regards to what the day looks for a high school student and what their schedule looks like. Um, we are doing all that work in preparation for the school to open up in August of 2020. We had a large group that has met multiple days in regards to actual schedule for students. So instead of maybe, okay, maybe, maybe not the first year, but we're working on this, students wouldn't necessarily have a block in their schedule for lunch, but they may have open blocks so that they can get something to eat if they want to. You know, we don't necessarily right now, we don't want to, you know, to incorporate the study hall concept as a study hall concept, but opportunities for kids to learn, have time to prepare maybe during the day, and then also get something to eat as well. Yep. What makes this high school more unique than anything else that's been built recently? Yep. So what makes this high school more, than, more unique than anything else? Okay, first of all, first of all, um, the learning environments themselves and that the way that they're designed and the ability to actually extend the learning spaces from a traditional classroom based on operable doors that, can, that allows um, uh, larger groups to work on projects together, that's one. The ability, okay, you don't, you're not gonna find too many high schools out there that don't have a very large cafeteria and then incorporated that square feet. Remember, everything costs money. We took that and we put it into the learning environment because we felt as though that space was underutilized throughout the day, which you can see here, right? It's a large space, we use it for lunch, and then the rest of the day it's not utilized. We didn't want our design based on that. We wanted it based on instruction and learning environments. I think the third um, uh, that you'll find in this building is um, the 
I, I don't want to say this is, this is unique to new buildings, but it's going to be incorporated. It's an important component to, to this, this building is the use of technology and the flexibility of furniture. You know, in this school now, when you go around here, it's very difficult to change and adjust the, the classroom. There's a whiteboard. Some of our rooms here still have blackboards. And everything has to face that, right? In these classrooms, and along with the elementary, and you can see it over at the middle school in the, in the uh, hallway connector, all of those classroom walls can be used for learning. They can write on them. You know, um, they can move furniture. If they want to have tables um, connected to each other, they can do that. They can have them separated out. There's just a lot more flexibility when it comes to furniture. And maybe that's not unique to a lot of these new schools, but it's important in, in, as part of the design of this school. Yes? Could you talk about the lots and where the access to them will be? And who will use which ones? Great question. Where are the parking lots going to be? So there's a small parking lot in the back of this building that is not to be used for students, that um, is primarily going to be used for staff members. And then once this building is taken down, there will be two separate parking lots, one designed for students and one designed for staff and visitors. And um, I can just tell you that there is increased space in regards to parking lots because nowadays, which has changed, right? We have less kids jumping on the big yellow limousine and more kids coming to, 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 the, um, to the school in their own car. And we have parking spaces designed in the new layout site plan to be able to hold those cars. Right now, we have kids that are across the street to park in the rain parking lot. Um, we control some of that, right? I mean, so not everyone may get a parking pass. Maybe juniors and seniors get them. You know that, but we'll have plenty of space for the, those that we want to have parking for. So um, all the buses actually will come in off of the main Bagley uh, Road. That was a shift in the design. If you were a part of that, there was some discussion of having that behind the building, but felt as though we didn't want those running through the neighborhoods. And that was a real concern that came to our attention. And we modified the um, plan so that our buses are coming in. Um, buses in, are not allowed to be on Fifth Avenue in the back, right? Um, that's that's uh, been put in place, other than, okay, so you're going to see a bus because we have kids in elementary that we have to drop off in middle school, right? There's purpose for that, but not coming to get um, to the site for setup. Um, and, and the cars will come in off of um, Bagley Road, I think, right? I mean, is, is they all coming in off Bagley? They also can come in off of uh, Eastland? The buses Eastland. come in off Bagley and they exit to Maple, and then they go out at Bagley. So they don't come in Parking on the other side, so that would be on the east side of the front line. They can come in off of Eastland and then exit off of the first. Yeah. On the layout. Okay. Yep. What else? Yes. It's almost what she was saying about the parking, but not what it's going to be. What's going to happen when you have this school? So the, the parking during the transition is going to be a challenge, <laughs> right? It, I mean, it is now. I mean, the reality is right now it's, it's a challenge. And we only lost maybe, what, 100 spaces you know, at most. And um, I can just tell you there is a lot of conversation between Panzeca and us in regards to trying to take this building down and get parking up so that we're not going to have as much disruption um, we are fortunate we have the other parking lot across the street. We also are fortunate with a good relationship with the church. We have a lot of students that park at the church across the street as well. Um, but that, it's going to be a disruption and a challenge as we go through that. Are we going to be able to park along the side streets when we have, whether it's a basketball game or a volleyball game or a game? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't have the answer to, for that. The, the question was, can you park on the side streets? Um, I think some of the side streets have signs on them where you can't park during the day. 
Uh, and that, those were put up because we had students parking in neighborhoods on side streets that uh, we didn't want, and nor did the neighbors. Um, but we'll look into that. That's a good question. Now. Yeah. yeah. Will the multiple cafes be run by the school system as employees of the school system or franchise out? Multiple cafes, will they be run by the school system or will they be franchised out? And the answer is they'll be run by the school system. There are a lot of cars that end up coming down Maple now to pick up their children and the street's totally backed up. What's going to happen to that traffic in the future? Well, for pickup purposes, um, the parking lot is designed, I think, where people are going to come in off of Bagley to pick up their students versus coming down Maples, right? Bagley and Eastland. Yeah, Bagley and Eastland. So there won't be an access in the other way off of Fifth, I mean off of Maple. Right now you have a lot of traffic coming out of one parking lot, taking a left to get onto Bagley, and as we know, right, that gets stopped pretty quickly. Right? You probably only have, what, four or five cars before if that light's red? And then you have the cars going the other way. Yep. What's the maximum class size? That you can so you mean that the total number of students no, like per class? Yeah, so we have our class sizes right now at the high school are maximum 28 students. That's by contract. And some classrooms have 28. Many classrooms have 25. You know, some have less than that, depending upon what the course is and kids taking them. What's that? Oh, no, no, no. You're talking about specific class. Um, about 450 students per class. That's the maximum? No, I mean, that's what we have. That's what will be in here. So how many ninth graders will be in the building? About 400 and 450 ninth graders. And I can just tell you, based on our enrollment projections, in, in the younger grade levels, that's continuing to go down. It's going to get over the next probably 10, 12 years, you're looking around 350 to 375 per class. So if there was a baby boom, you wouldn't be able to Well, you know, so the, the question was if there was a huge increase or spike in the number of kids that would be coming to the school, um, we wouldn't be able to handle them in this new building. And, and you know, when we talk about the number of kids in a, school, in a building, like 1,800 kids come to the high school now, there are not 1,800 kids that are in this building at one time. We have a lot of kids that travel down the street to Polaris for a half-day program in the morning, and then we have a, a very large number of students that go to the afternoon program. We have students now that take classes through College Credit Plus, and they take those classes at John Carroll, at Baldwin Wallace, at Lakeland, or at uh, um, LLC, or at Tri-C. So um, the building that's being built will be able to hold not only the students when it first opens, but plenty of space for the some, let's just say some huge increase. I don't know about huge increase, but I mean an increase in the number of students, just based on how schools are structured today at the high school. So what is the, yep. What is the green space in this drive in what would be the uh, northeast quadrant there? The green space in the eastern quadrant, that is green space, and then, the what's that? To the east, that's retention. The darker green? Oh, those are houses. Yeah, those are the houses on 5th and also on Eastland. Trying to figure out where it is. Yeah, so you're looking at it from down in the bottom here. This is, this is Bagley Road down here. Eastland, Maple fifth in the back. There's, there's a lot more space in front that they just don't have in the picture. So those are the handful of houses that are on the uh, south side of the building. Correct. Correct, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, we're going to transition to the elementary school with C.T. Taylor. We'll let Jason run the, the technology, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, hopefully we don't have to talk about kids driving to school at the elementary school, so. Uh, 
I'm going to do a little update again. Like Mark has said, this is the same report that we do. We give to the district every month. We come and present to the school board every month our monthly status report. What you'll see on the cover here of this month is the beam signing that we just undertook. The beam is sitting at Brook Park Elementary, and it will be set Monday at 9 o'clock. So we had, uh, to the other elementary schools in town, we had to get, give the opportunity to the kids to come, sign their name on the beam, and they'll forever become a part of that new building. Our building, and so area A is the existing auditorium that remained from the old school. That will also house the new administration area. Area B is the center hub of the building. That's where your gymnasium, your multi-use areas, your gymnasium, your kitchen, and your mechanical rooms, which will feed. C is your single story academic wing, and D is your two story academic wing. Um, we'll roll through some pictures. I'll give you some highlights here. So um, area C is under roof. Shingles are complete on that right now. Um, you'll see as we go through the pictures here in a second that that has really taken shape. The mechanicals are roughed in, all the metal stud framing is done, so you really see what that space looks like. Um, area D is the next area that's the furthest along. And the, the interesting part that you get to see with this building is that you'll get to see every phase of construction at different lev levels of completion in this, this building. Um, area D is the two-story building, so the first floor is complete, work is progressing in there. The second floor has been, uh, Mark had mentioned in the high school, they have precast plank that form your floors. At Brook Park Elementary, we have what we call a metal bar joist and metal deck and then poured concrete on top of that. So that work has been done, that second floor is in place. The studs, are, or the, excuse me, the light gauge trusses are progressing for the roof structure. Um, areas B and A, so what we've done at our site is we've worked the building back to the middle and then out. So buildings A and B, you'll see that in some of the pictures that the steel is going up currently to make that shape of that building. Um, concrete, there's a little bit of concrete left to be poured on the slab on grade. But uh, again, drive by, you'll see, very, you know, obviously the auditorium is existing and is complete. You'll see building C's under roof. The, they're beginning masonry veneer, the brick veneer is going on in that building right now and all the work is progressing inside. The D's a little bit behind it. And then A ultimately, or excuse me, B in the small part of A is where they'll work out of the building. Again, so here's the area A, structural steels in place. It's going up currently as you see as you go by there. Um, missing some slab on grade. As soon as steel set, they'll come back in behind them, get the underground done, get the slab on grade poured. Again, these are different areas of the building, so the masonry is complete. Again, you're going your bar joists for your ceilings. Over here, you're on the right, you have a corridor. So well, you'll see the bar joist, that's what forms the roof structure. Metal deck goes on that and then the roof goes on top of that. So now we're, we're back into the center kind of hub of the building. Again, this is your kitchen and your gymnasium. But you'll see, you know, if you use your imagination a little bit, you can see on the left there the kitchen CMU. There's some back in the background, you can see a, a floor depression right there. That's where your, your cooler freezer is going to go. Um, forming the outside walls of that area. Again, you don't see the steel there again. You're working our way out of that building through building B, which is the, the last area that will form the entire structure that will come out of the center of that area. Again, just more pictures of, of the CMU. Again, there's the, the, you see the two depressions over here in the left, or in your left side, where those again are the depressions where the freezer cooler sits in, which will hold your, your food and stuff in the kitchen area. Um, so now we're going to jump to building C. Again, the area that's the most furthest along, it actually looks like a, a building at this point because you have a roof on it, you have shingles on it. You'll see we have the dense glass and the metal stud framing on the exterior wall. So the construction type of, of our elementary and the high school are very similar with some minor exceptions, but steel frame building, metal stud, frames the walls between the structural steel, and then you get dense glass, uh, air barrier on it and then brick veneer on that building and some metal siding and some select locations. Again, this will give you the, the again, that will all be brick veneer at some point. When that's done, again, you can see at the bottom parts of the building, they have begun starting from the bottom, working their way up with that brick veneer. Uh, again, here's a zoom in of that. Your base course is set. There's your flashings, which handle the moisture away from the wall of the building. Again, the brick will then sit on top of that and go up, form that extra envelope. 
So again, we're going to jump in the building. This is inside the building now. So again, you'll see metal studs in place. Classroom shapes have, have taken their final shape. Um, overhead framing has begun. You've got all your, your duct work, your mechanicals, your piping that feed your HVAC systems and your plumbing systems are very well along in this area. Uh, you can see in the picture to the left there, there's some copper pipe over at the top corner. There's a piece of ductwork sticking out there. We have what they call a simple saver air barrier system that goes on the underside of the trusses, which forms that, helps form that envelope. Ductwork in, this is a ductwork in the classrooms. Again, you'll see the shape. Walls are in place, haven't started drywall on there yet, but they're doing rough in and getting all the stud framing done. Again, much like the high school, we have uh, in several of these openings, we'll have overhead doors, which will allow that single classroom to be expanded into a, a larger learning area with a lot of flexible furniture and a lot of flexible spaces to give the new 21st century lear learning model that, that Michael had spoken about a little bit ago. Again, just further pictures of the rough end here that's going again, you'll see metal studs, you see a lot of the electrical conduit and electrical rough boxes that are in there. Um, the ductwork sitting on the ground, there's a, a window that's been temporarily enclosed. We have the windows, they're ready to be installed as soon as the brick veneer is finished. So then you'll see the brick veneer and then windows will follow right behind them. Plumbing rough. This is, these are bathrooms. You see some wood blocking in the wall that will ultimately hold your bathroom accessories and your grab bars. So area D, again, these are for upper, upper left. Those are first floor pictures. Again, you have um, bar joist and the second floor deck has been poured. So looking down that hallway, it looks very, very similar to what you saw on building C, which is only a one story building. Metal stud walls and framing on the interior have begun. Uh, overhead roughing has begun, has started there also. So that's what you're seeing in the four pictures on the left. Jumping over the right, we have the stairs in. The, the great pictures are exciting. <laughs> and then the, the bottom right hand corner, or that's your slab on metal deck that has been poured. Again, so the, the structure is there, your two story. Um, probably the one more set of pictures. You'll see that the top here, we have the light gauge trusses that are going on to form the roof structure. Bottom picture, or the, so the bottom picture are just the HVAC units that have been set in place prior to that light gauge metal uh, trusses going on that roof. So um, what you'll see and what you can expect here over the next several weeks, several months, is that, that the shape of that building is going to be more clearly defined as we go along. Again, you're seeing roof structure go on. They'll work their way from area D back over into area B and pick up that little piece of A that's done over by the existing auditorium. You'll see brick veneer going on, which will be your final colors that you'll see. As soon as the brick veneer is done, the windows will go in. Um, on budget, not too many surprises over there. Um, Schedule-wise, we've still been staying where we are. And that's pretty much what I have for you. I'll take any questions that anybody has that, about construction. <laughs> yep. Um, you just mentioned the schedule. Uh, the original complete date was supposed to be November of, of this year, and now it's pushed back to be uh, early next year. And then we, we're not moving in until August before we schedule. Um, but you said we were on schedule. Can you uh, talk you want me to talk about it or do you want to? Okay. So, um, so the question or the statement was um, the statement around being on schedule. We knew, right, based on weather and some other factors that the original completion date was being pushed back a little bit. I think about, uh, about 20 days right now behind in schedule. Um, so that pushes us really back closer to that beginning of the, the 2020 school um, year, right? So then knowing that and understanding construction that um, right now there hasn't been any other any hiccups, right, with weather and all those type of things. And, and probably won't see many of those because a lot of the things that will happen during the summer will get the building enclosed and um, what not as dependent upon the weather, right? Um, but when we get the, the ability to actually have the building, we understand clearly through our other construction process, pro, uh, projects that it doesn't always like get your key, move in, everything works great. And we're just going to take our time and do it right with our young kids. Got it? Anything else?
Okay, all right, good. Okay, so what we do have is, um, you, you'll see here, this is the elementary school. That's why nobody was paying attention to me, right? Uh, this is the elementary school, really excited about it. These also have, uh, someone had asked earlier around these, uh, what makes this any different than any other elementary school, right? In this school, again, the concept of utilizing square feet in the learning spaces. We have classrooms that have uh, operable doors, and you'll see them. They're also in learning what they, a lot of times they're called learning pods, and they all, are all kind of in a square facing into a much larger open space in the middle with a stage, screen, large group presentations. They can walk right out their classroom or they can open up their doors, and there's much more space for um, our first graders and our second graders. We actually saw this model when we were going through the design process down in uh, New Albany and had an opportunity to go in and see how that operated with kids and it was just incredible. So you can see here, this is the open learning space. Person up there with a student is on an uh, uh, elevated stage area. Behind that is uh, teacher learning spaces, bathrooms, and that separates you know, one grade level from another. The other thing that's unique in this building, because we don't have a cafeteria, we have two separate kitchens. We have a kitchen on the first floor, so students will be able to walk right down the hallway, get their food, and they'll be able to come back into that open space and have lunch while, while the other group is out on the playground, and then they'll just switch um, and utilize that space. The, the uh, students that are on the second floor will walk right down the end of their hallway, not down the steps to a cafeteria. They'll be able to walk right out. There's a separate kitchen on the second floor to get their food and then come back into that shared space as well. I could tell you, um, because of the decision to keep the auditorium, um, there are not that many elementary schools that I know of that have an auditorium like what our students are gonna have at this elementary school that can seat that number of people. Um, it's pretty unique. And then we also have the video of the high school and that may be able to give you a better picture of what it looks like. There are some other unique features and I loved it. I could spend all night telling you about the, both of the buildings that we're really, really excited about. Um, I would say if you have questions and you drive home tonight and you think, I wish I asked that question, please just call. You can call me, you can call Jeff. We'll get back to you. If we don't have the answer, we'll call C.T. Taylor and Panzika, and they'll give us an update, and we'll get you the answer. Okay? Really appreciate everybody coming this evening. Um, and then uh, look forward to we'll giving you the updates in the future. Thanks.